ladies and gentle putts, Lozy is back with another installment of Knock Off Turbulence, a series where I will review films from Good Times Entertainment. In today's video, I'm here to review the 1995 film of Little Red Riding Hood, produced by Jetlag Productions. Let's face it, we all heard the story through movies, songs, TV shows, books, etc. Speaking of songs, I noticed that Golden Films would create one song of their own for the opening and then use this public domain music for the rest of the films. Whereas with Jetlag, they make their own songs. It should be noted by now that Good Times pals love to make films based on the original tales just for a cash grab to quote unquote compete with a titan that is Disney. But in this case for the film, it's just another retelling of the story. Now the earliest versions could date back to pre-17th century and they're totally fucked up. Why? Well, the original version ends with the wolf cooking the grandmother and Red performed unintentional cannibalism. In other words, she ate her grandmother without knowing that's her grandmother. Hey yo, what the fuck? The wolf even tells Red to remove the granny's clothing and toss it into the fire. Another version ends with Red getting eaten by the wolf after it tells her to get in bed, in which Charles Perrault himself used that idea into morality. What everyone is more familiar with is the Brothers Grimm version, where the lumberjack sees Red Riding Hood in trouble capturing the wolf and Red Riding Hood goes back inside to save her grandmother. At least this version is more toned down and less gruesome. Enough talk, let's dive into this film and have fun. The movie starts with a song and a montage of Granny and Red spending time together. And to be honest, the song is pretty decent. It's made with love, made with care. So with themes of sunshine, just for her to wear. She's a special one, whose heart is filled with fear. She brings me happiness, little red riding hood. More often than not, those who have grown old long for the days of their youth, while the young ones can't wait to grow old. I'm 20 years old and sadly, I'm wishing to be a kid again. <laughs> Funny enough, I didn't focus on my growth when I was a kid. The thought of being an elderly woman never occurred to me, and this look creeps me out a bit. So Red spreads the cake with tar, whereas her mother is preparing soup. Also, why is the icing on the butter knife look lighter than the one on the cake? Anyway, Red got her basket and hood to step into this long journey. Now don't run. I don't want any accidents. I'll be careful. And go straight to Grandma's. No stopping at your friends to play. I won't. I promise. And don't talk to strangers! Damn, okay, Mom. You could've just told me before I started walking. So Red kept walking and this is where the film starts to become problematic. Mind you, this film is only 48 minutes long, and you see why. Are you okay? So the fun explains that it forgot it was its mother's birthday. First of all, you're a deer. Second, how can you keep track of dated time of any year? I guess it overheard Red and her mother at one point. Anyway, Red picked up some flowers and gave them to the fawn to make it up to its mother. Red gets back on track until she heard clucking for what I assume to be a chicken. That's odd. Oh, no way. That's Pidgey. It's about time somebody heard me. Dude, you don't have to be a dick about it. So the bird injured its wing after attempting to fly, but he crashed. So Red heals him with a droplet of jam. I'm not an expert in healing animals, but I don't think jam works to heal a bird's wing. It might cause an infection. And he licked it. Nice. See if you can flap it. Great! Hey! That stuff really works! Can I have some more? Sorry, the rest is for my grandma. Oh. Don't you think you better fly back home? Your parents must be worried about you. Uh, I can't. 
Of course you can. I said I can't, and I can't. But your wing's fine. It's not your wing at all, is it? It's your head. You're afraid. So? So, when we're afraid of something, we have to learn not to be afraid of it. Wow, Red. Ted Talk needs to book you to do motivational speaking. I'm so impressed. So Red takes him to a nearby tree and attempts to encourage him to fly, but he's being a stubborn little bitch about it. Come on, I'll catch you if something goes wrong, which it won't. Forget it! Fine, stay there then, see if I care. Eventually, the bird takes off and begins to fly. Nah, I'm just kidding. So now the bird can fly and returns the favor by teaching her how to whistle like a missile. Make him whistle like a missile. You got it! If you're all alone and want some company, it's a fact that you can always count on me. In the blinking of an eye, be by your side, just whistle and I'll be there. Red, you're supposed to whistle, dammit, and he'll be there! So the bird flies away, whereas Red goes back on track. And finally, we get to see the wolf in sheets clothing with a man's purse. Wait, what? Wait a damn minute. <laughs> so Wolf puts on her disguise and jumps in front of Red. <gasps> My utmost apology, young lady. I didn't mean to frighten ya. Well, you did. You can't just step out in front of somebody like that. He warns her that a wolf is roaming the area and to be on the lookout for it, in which Red thanks him for the warning. Not even moments later, he calls her off again to ask her where she's going. She told him to fuck off because she'll be late to go to Grandma's and kept walking. That gives the wolf some necrophilic ideas. Red stops out of river to drink water, which probably have chemicals from small fishes. Wolf followed her and decided to sneak up on her from behind when suddenly... <laughs> and a small beaver appears, in which Red scolded at him for not being so careful. The beaver is building a den for protection from the winter, which he got a late start. Maybe I could help you. What do you know about building a lodge? Well, nothing really, but you could teach me. Look, I don't have time to teach you, okay? I'm rushing as it is, can't you see that, huh? But someone as big as I am could make things go that much faster. Don't you have something to do? D don't you have to be somewhere? Well, I have to be at my grandma's. But I want to waste time letting her starve to death just to pat out run time. No. I'm really very good with my hands. Red, don't give the wolf any ideas about your hands. It's time to stop! So now we're seeing filler to pat out this movie any longer. We don't care about seeing beavers and Red making a dam at this point. Plus, the song sounds like a jingle for a Barbie commercial. If you do your part, then I'll do One eternity later. After this mess is over with, Red went back on the path. Ma'am, you had enough breaks. Keep walking, goddammit! 
Oh yeah, we get another timber, even though they're already finished with the fucking dam! Meanwhile, Red is going on her journey till the wolf, who's disguised as an old man, fell in front of her. He tells he's starving and Red offered him a small slice of tar cake. Just a smidgen would be nice. What's your name? They call me Little Red Riding Hood. I can't give it all to you. It's for my sick grandma. Tell me more about your sweet old grandma. Oh, grandma's just the best grandma you could... Yes? Actually, I shouldn't be talking to you. My mother warned me not to talk to strangers. Yeah, the same thing goes when you socialize with the fawn, the bird, and the beavers. They're strangers as well, but you've befriended them because they're cute. And she's absolutely right, dearie. Only, we're not strangers anymore. We're friends. He asked her again, then she spilled the beans, which excites the wolf and he runs away. Red Confused shrugs it off and walks to the opposite direction. Like, bruh, are you going back home or are you going to grandma's? Continuity error at its finest. Fuck yeah! So the wolf arrived at Granny's house and picked up a red tablecloth and puts on a voice to trick Granny. It's me, Grandma! Wow, how impactful and impressive. Tres McNeil, Nancy Cartwright, and Tara Strong got competition. He opens the door and exposed himself, practically posing for her. Oh yeah, he doesn't have a tail for some reason. So Red arrived at Granny's house and we get to see her walk up to the door. It's like the animators feel as though it's necessary for anyone who picked up this film. It's like they're saying, hey, let's make the watcher walk up to Granny's store what if what it felt like a whole minute long, but it's actually 25 seconds. Bruh. Red picks up some hazelnuts before she goes to the door, and the wolf is already in Granny's clothing. Afternoon, Grandma. Afternoon, dear. Sorry I'm late. No, no, no! Don't kiss me! I actually have HPV with the shine of gonorrhea! She goes to the kitchen to make tea for the imposter in her cell with honey. I brought you some of Mom's famous mushroom barley soup! And some of my almost famous chocolate cake. Although it's missing a piece I gave to a hungry person on the way over here. How thoughtful of you, dear. And last but not least, some fresh bread and homemade raspberry jam. I'm sorry it's not a full jar. I had to use a little of it to heal an injured bird's wing. But it's just one small droplet, though. She got enough jam for the bread. Before she would put them in the pantry, the wolf stopped her. Also, Red, you've seen this wolf many times already. Why the fuck are you not running yet? Grandma? What long arms you have. Better to hug you with, my dear. What big eyes you have, Grandma. Better to see your pretty face with, my dear. And what a long tongue you have. I know. It makes succulent things more succulent. FBI, open up! Your mouth, it's so large. Better to eat you with, my dear! You're the wolf! Yeah, no shit, honey! What have you done with my grandmother? She's dessert. Your lunch! Meanwhile, (sighs) 
Yeah, sure is tiresome when you're just sitting there. So the bird flies away and Red goes back inside Grandma's house to save her. Red confesses to her that she had been talking to strangers and befriended the wolf who would later fool her. And we're seeing Red walking home carrying her own hypocrisy. And that's the end of the story. And that concludes Little Red Riding Hood from 1995. It is counterproductive. The whole concept of the original tale is to be cautious of strangers, but we see Red befriending them. She was basically wasting time talking to them, doing stuff for them, just for the film to pad out. Plus, she's not very wary of whom she should trust. As a matter of fact, she's way too trusting. The wolf is not intimidating and tries too hard to be a comedic relief character, which misses the point on why he was feared. The animation is decent, if not okay, even though there is that Jackie Chan face. The voice acting is also decent. The songs may be fine, but they're not special. Overall, I would say this film failed at getting the point across. Watching YouTube videos surrounding the Red Riding Hood lore is more informative than this. I hope you guys enjoy this review, and I'll see y'all in the next flight. Bye bye! What a loving child, she's my heart's delight. She can make a cloudy day seem sunny and bright. This can